بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ کنٹینیوئنگ دا ٹاپک فرام دا پریویس ویڈیو ٹو ڈے دا بیسک ٹاپک از اور انرجی لیولس اینڈ انرجی بینڈ ڈائیگرام سو یو نیڈ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ انرجی بینڈ تھیوری ٹو ٹو گیٹ اے پراپر کانسیپٹ آف اٹ آف دا کنڈکشن بینڈ دی ویلنس بینڈ بٹ بفور دیٹ وٹ ہیپن واز ان دا پریویس ویڈیو آ پوائنٹ ریمینڈ because that was getting very longer so the point is that if you have if you increase the temperature so increase of temperature and if with the increase in temperature the resistance increases which means if you have the increase of temperature directly proportional to the resistance of the material the material is said to have a positive temperature coefficient positive temperature coefficient fine and the example of this is conductors fine and why is this so the reason the reason is that the conductors already have free electrons present yes you know this yes now what happens when you apply heat to it when the temperature is increased so there is no more electron to become free whereas the already present free electrons would gain energy and they would do what they would start vibrating at a greater speed so this vibration would further you know would do what it would further limit the flow of current through it fine so this is what it means similarly if you have your increase of temperature let me write it like this the temperature increase is inversely proportional to the resistance whereas if you which means what that if you increase the temperature the resistance of the device decreases so such sort of materials are called uh, such sort of materials are are said to have negative temperature coefficients and the example of this is your very own germanium and silicon semiconductors semiconductors i'm telling you the reason the reason for this is that the semiconductors uh, priorly do not have any free electrons so which means what when you apply heat when you give it energy so they would break the bond and they would become free and free electrons are what they are available for conduction the the job of the free electron is to conduct electricity so which means that the conductivity has increased which means the resistivity has decreased so this is called this is said to have a negative temperature coefficients energy levels and energy band diagram if you talk about energy levels first so what is an energy level so energy level is you know that electrons would revolve around the nucleus in certain fixed circular paths known as orbits or you also call it energy level why do you call it why do you call it as energy level because each and every orbit has a fixed amount of energy each and orbit has each and every orbit has a fixed amount of energy so that is why it's called energy level where at the, where the nearest to the orbit has the lowest energy and the farthest has the highest energy fine so if you say that this is the nucleus of the atom this is the nucleus of the atom so if this is the first shell so it has the lowest energy the electron over here the electron over here would have the lowest energy similarly then the next would have greater energy than this one similarly the next would have greater than that one so if this is the final shell if this is the valence shell so which means that this would have the the electrons in this one would have the highest energy the further you move from the nucleus the higher energy the orbit electron has and one other point that no electron can remain in between the two shells it either has to be in the first or in the second not in between either in the second or in the third not in between fine 
similarly if you you could ex, you could give it energy this one you can give as energy you could just uh, take it as much energy that you could take it jump it from the second and take it directly to the third you could do it like this as well but it could not stay in between when it loses energy it has to come to the downward shell it cannot stay over there for example if this third where well, if this third shell electron loses energy so this could not uh, you know uh, this has to either go to the second shell or to the first shell cannot stay in between anywhere fine why because the energy level is fixed for each and every shell let's say the first shell has energy of one electron volt so the second has to uh, has two electron volts and there is no 1.5 electron volts so it has to jump from two electron volts to one electron volt fine yes now the 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 farthest has the highest energy but if you kick out an electron or if you have another electron outside of this atomic structure so this has higher than the highest energy which means the the the, the this outside electron has got even more energy than that which is inside the highest energy level fine yes now ionization potential ionization potential is what ionization potential or ionization energy so this is the energy required to remove the electron from the valence shell of an isolated gaseous atom the energy required to remove an electron from the valence shell of an isolated gaseous atom fine so this is the, so if you i have to I have to uh, you know remove this electron from the atom I have to give it energy and that energy would be less as compared if I have to remove an electron from the second why because in the second the force of the nucleus the force of attraction from the nucleus would be more on the second electron as compared to the third is that fine it is okay the farther electron is from the nucleus the higher is energy state you can have a read out from the book you can have a read out from the book now the the energy band diagram or the band of energy the energy band diagram let's say i give it the heading of energy band diagram so now if you talk about a single atom if you talk about a single atom so there is only have to be a force between the nucleus if you talk about a single atom so there is only a force of the nucleus and the electron the force of attraction right the the nucleus has a positive charge entity the electron is a negative charge entity so in between you have a force of attraction fine yes whereas if you have let's say multiple atoms or if, I, if for instance i consider two atoms so there is a nucleus there is a, let's say i'm drawing only one shell there is an electron similarly over here you have a nucleus you have an electron so the nucleus is positive charge so have a look now what will happen is you would have a force of repulsion between these two right you would have a force of repulsion between these two whereas you would have a force of attraction between these two and a force of attraction between these two and and similarly a force over here and similarly a force over here which means now multiple forces are acting previously on a single atom we had a single force and now when we talk about multiple atoms so we have multiple forces acting you have more atoms you have more forces is that clear till here it is so what would happen what would happen now a bond is formed of course a bond is formed when one atom 
let's say an anionic bond is formed one is sodium one is chlorine so one would gain an electron one would lose an electron a bond is formed let's say we have four silicon so a covalent bond is formed anything when a bond is formed what happens is the energy level of an electron will change the energy level of an electron will change so you write this down when bond is formed energy level of an electron will change why because of the different forces acting maybe the force does it what the force uh, uh, the makes it to go into a higher energy level maybe the force forces it to go into a lower energy level right so this is what this is because of the different forces acting yes different forces acting so at each energy level there are electrons present now when a bonding occurs due to bonding the energy level splits due to bonding what happens the energy level splits into what into two things the one is your anti bonding nuclear orbital molecular anti bonding molecular orbital and the next is your bonding molecular orbital so you please confirm if this is molecular or is it nuclear this is molecular so what is the major difference between the two the difference is that in the bonding molecular orbital the energy is less you have energy is less whereas in the anti bonding the energy is greater and you know it very well that each and everything in the universe would like to go to a stable state would like to go to a, a lower energy state so if this is a lower energy state electrons would prefer to be here so over here you would have more electrons and if this is a higher energy state so each and every electron would try to lose energy and get into a lower energy state so which means over here you would have less number of electrons present fine yes now this these two appeared these two appeared due to the bonding of two atoms but only two atoms will not make a bond only two atoms will not combine there will be multiple atoms so which means that multiple energy level would split and multiple anti bonding and many bonding molecular orbitals would be formed isn't it like this it is so multi many such levels would appear many such levels would appear why because many atoms would take part in bonding you can write it down the english for yourself many such levels and the bonding molecular orbital bonding molecular orbital they would appear because many atoms not only two would take part in bonding over here i talked only about two so the energy level would split the into these two things now what is a band a band is what a band is what band i said an energy band diagram right so a band is the collection of energy levels it's a collection of energy levels with what which are very close in energy to each other which are very close in energy to each other 
XO, which means you would have many antibonding molecular orbitals, right? You would have many bonding molecular orbitals. So, of different atoms, the antibonding molecular orbitals of different atoms would have approximately the same energy. Why? Because they are all of higher energy. So, when they are when they come together, they form a band of the antibonding molecular orbitals. Fine. This is the AM, let's say. AM orbital. Let's say this is the AM orbital of one atom. Right? Uh, uh, one of one atom, the next of one atom, the third of third atom, fourth of fourth atom, fifth of fifth atom. So the anti-bonding molecule, anti molecular orbital of many atoms are placed over here. This is called a band. This is now a, the higher energy band, right? This band has a higher energy, right? Similarly, the bonding molecular orbital of one atom, of the other atom, of the third, of the fourth, of the fifth. This has a lower energy. So this is a higher energy band. This is a lower energy band. So you've got two bands. Now what happens, this higher energy band, this higher energy band is called the conduction band. This higher energy band is called the conduction band. And this lower energy called, this lower one is called the valence band. This lower energy band is called the valence band. What is the difference? What is the difference between the two? The difference is that in the valence band, the electrons are attached to the atoms. Electrons are attached to the atom. Which means they have not let F D atomic structure whereas in the conduction band the electrons are free to conduct current electrons are free to conduct so this is the own this is the difference this is the same atom they both are in the same atom but one is attached to the atom it is lying under the influence of the nucleus the nucleus has a force on it whereas in the second the nucleus has no force on it and it is free to conduct is it clear it should be it should be so that is it so now the major thing is the thing that we talk about is conduction right so what do we say about conduction we the, the major purpose is conduction so what if we have an electron in the valence band and we want to con we want to make it conducting so we have to give it energy we have to shift the electron from the valence band to the conduction band by giving it energy by giving it the ionization energy this gap this gap in between the two is called the forbidden energy gap this gap is the forbidden energy gap which means the electron cannot stay in between either it has to attain certain energy to go from the valence band to the conduction band or if it is in the conduction band it has to lose a certain amount of energy to come down to the valence band it cannot stay in between is that clear it is let's say we talk about conductors intulators and semiconductors on this base. So the energy the energy that is required for this to get into this or for this to lose to get into this the forbidden energy the energy required is is represented by an E naught. 
is it represented by an E naught? Let me remove the board so we can do a further discussion. All right. Let's say you have a valence band with the blue color, green, your forbidden gap, red, the conduction band. So if this is your valence band, let's say. Your valence band. And you have your conduction band over here somewhere. Which means the energy required is very high to move your electron from the valence band to the conduction band. This is your forbidden energy gap E0. So you have to give it E0 to get the electron from the valence band to the conduction band. So this is a very high energy. There is a greater gap in between the two. So such sort of a material are called insulators. This is the characteristic of an insulator. Right? Yes. So band gap is high, more energy is required to transfer electrons. So this is called insulators. This energy is about, uh, about 6 electron volts. This energy is about 6 electron volts. And let me see if I have written it somewhere over here. Yes, it's greater than, it's greater than 5 electron volts. Yes. Yeah? So for insulators, your E0, it's greater than 5 electron volts. Similarly, if you have this as your valence band, and, 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 and this is your conduction band, so the energy required is quite less as compared to the insulators so such sort of a material this material is called a semiconductor now where the e naught is quite less this is approximately one electron volt this is approximately one electron volt yes e naught is approximately one electron volt whereas i have the values for silicon and for germanium so the value for silicon is uh, 1.16 electron volts and for germanium it's 0 0.75 electron volts now you would be wondering if both of them are of the same group of the periodic table why do they have different energies so it's because uh, of the atomic structure germanium has got more orbits so to remove the valence electron the energy required is less why because the force of the nucleus on the high uh, the, on the higher or order orbit is less whereas when you move close to the nucleus the force of the nucleus on the electron increases so high energy is required in case of silicon so this is for semiconductors whereas if this is your valence band you have an electron in it and you need to shift it to the to the conduction band so the energy that you require over here is very very less or it's almost zero so this is the case of conductors this is the case of conductors no forbidden gap you you almost have no forbidden gap which means what you you may write it like this that you have no forbidden gap so which means what that the conduction band and the valence band are overlapping so you could say that almost you have no forbidden gap so no energy is almost required all the electrons that are available in the valence shell of the atom of the conductors are available for conduction and I believe I have told it to you in a very great detail so this should be clear this should be clear one electron volt what is one electron volt this is the energy right so voltage is what it's the work done per unit charge voltage 
वोल्टेज इज वॉट इट्स दी वर्क डन पर यूनिट चार्ज सो इफ आई आई नीड एनर्जी सो एनर्जी इज बेसिकली द वर्क डन सो आई कुड राइट इट फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन दैट दैट द वर्क डन इज द वोल्टेज इन टू द चार्ज सो इफ आई टेक अ वोल्टेज ऑफ वन वोल्ट एंड If the voltage is one volt and the charge of one electron, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 coulombs, so I would get one electron volt in terms of joules. So one electron volt would come out to be 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 joules. This is what one electron volt means. Electron volt in terms of joules. Is that clear? It is. So I believe I have explained it in a great detail. You could still study out the book. I cannot read it right now. You read out the book. You have any problems? You can ask me in the comment section. That is there for you guys. You need to do one other thing. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and remember me in your prayers. I finish this video over here. See you in the next one very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.